Hi. This is a watercolour I did all at least 15 years ago when I used to do them. I've explained that I, I went back to watercolour in December to help a friend. Now this, this particular watercolour, if I remember, wasn't done wet in wet. I wet the paper as I put the colour on. But it's a, you need some heavier paper to, to do the sort of watercolour without it buckling too much. So I'll, I'll do it wet in wet and see what, what we can make of it. It's just some simple trees, oak trees, with ivy growing up a couple of farm buildings. I've done a, just a quick uh, pencil sketch here just to show where I'm going to put the colour. Some blue trees, blue trees are not blue, but to give the distance, the, the impression of distance, create an aerial perspective. So I'll pin that up on the top here. I haven't got the watercolour, that, that went years ago. And I used to sign D.M. Usher then, I now sign just with my surname. So as usual, we'll wet the paper. All over. Yeah, as the paper dries, you can do harder, harder edged stuff, but to do the skies and, and the general colour underneath the landscape, we can do that wet in wet. And it's a very quick process, as you know. Right, that'll do. Put the usual raw sienna. I'm using the two inch hake just to give a bit of warmth in the sky. That's going to be a field at the bottom with a hopes and dry brush. I'll clean the brush now. Now instead of using Payne's grey and alizarin for the clouds, I'm going to use ultramarine for some blue. And I'm going to put a cloud in, do this as a sort of a bright wintry day, but I'm going to use the ultramarine and light red and see what happens. I used to use this as a, as a cloud mix and you, get a, you can get a granular separation of the two colours which can look quite attractive. So I'll just put Something like that. It's a much warmer cloud colour than the alizarin and Payne's grey, I think. So we'll just let that go now. And while that is a bit wet, as you can see, the paper has uh, has stretched already. So I'm going to just reclip that. going to uh, put in the background trees now using that that mix blue the raw sienna and a bit of light red and I, I'll try to keep the color away from the roofs of these little buildings I'm going to put in so I'll just ooh, need a bit stronger than that Make a split so we just bring the hairs back together. Show show some distance. Sort of horizon here. 
quite a low horizon. I think the original view I, I made up, it's good to perhaps do a sketch, a preliminary sketch first. I'll harden these up a little bit when it's dry with some shrubby type of grass and he, just to make a little bit of interest there below those buildings, farm buildings. It's good to do sketches on, a, on scraps of paper using just one colour like burnt umber. Tone sketches, you can sort out all your lights and darks. It's a good exercise and they're good fun to do. Just scratching some, some trunks coming up here. Just had a bit of texturing. All right, okay. Now, uh, I won't do that until that's dry there but I reckon I could do a little bit of uh, heavier stuff in there now using some burnt umber some ultramarine just it sort of provides a base for the painting I'll just in, just going across there, do a hit and miss. You can make some of them a little bit green with adding a bit of yellow to the mix. which is to my right, by my ear. I'm trying to keep my head out of the way these days. But there it is. All right, okay, that seems to be all right. Now, in this area, I'm going to, I'm going to put in those oak trees. But rather than put the whole trunk in and then cover it up with ivy, I'm going to put some of the ivy in first. And I'm going to use um, a bit of Payne's Grey, which is a good basic shortcut for yellows, an ivy colour. So just pick raw sienna, a bit of lemon yellow, a bit of, bit of the grey. Uh, right, okay, so we can, we can have the trees coming up here. And I did two trunks in this, so I'll have some, some more ivy coming up here, just up and down. I'll change colours, just add a bit, bit of raw sienna, catching the light. Trying to make my masses a little bit variable. I don't want it to look like a regiment of the branches and, and ivy. And you can drop in some darker shadow bits in there. Mm. All right, that'll do. That looks quite interesting. And there's a smaller tree over here, so I'll, I'll put that in as well to fill up that bit of space there. Yeah, we'll, I'll try not to make it the same as the other one. Okay, that'll do. I'll put in some 
some trunk colour, branch colour, using burnt umber. I hope the light is okay in this video, it's a grey day outside with little snowflakes. Right, that should do for that. Okay, I'm not, so they're coming up here. So, and then sp splitting at the top, some branches coming out of this. Do lovely things with the brush. Being oaks, they go all over the place. I'll be careful. I'm not going to overdo it, and I'm going to try and keep away from the rigor by using the chisel edge of of the hake. You can see how how fine it is. I'm listening to the radio as well, softly, I hope it's not disturbing you, but oops. But it's my favourite radio show of the week, it's with Ken Livingstone and David Mellor, they used to be members of parliament, Ken Livingstone was a former mayor of London and the show can be quite lively, Just phone in. Uh, I'm a bit thick there. Okay, so I'll get some coming down as well, coming out of there. Thicken them up a little bit. Ah, feel a bit thick there. Okay. Now one of these I want to be dominant, so I don't want them both to be the same. So I'll strengthen up this one a little bit. Didn't quite work out, but if I just take it up a little bit higher into the sky. I'm going to dry brush all the twigs and stuff on this in a minute, so I'm going to do this, this one here. Okay, with I'll clean the brush a little bit and go back with that colour and dry brush over that the shape of the tree if I can. Nice dry brush. Sorry if you can't see see that on the smooth side. Just stroking the back of the brush over that. It's a short hand for lots of twigs and branches. I'll go along this bank here with some heavier stuff now. Find a base for the tree, just shrubby, scrubby bits and pieces.
just to show some something going along, something nice going along the uh, tree line. Right, okay. That's all right. I might do some flicks with the rigger when I've done the house, not the house, the, the, the farm buildings. <coughs> For that, I'm going to uh, use use this this flat brush here, and I haven't decided what colour to make the roof yet. Uh, in the painting, I just put it in as a dark. So, barns, well, roof, slate, tile. Well, let's have a bit of a tile. Let's keep it. Try and leave some some sparkle, some unpainted paper. Uh, come down there, and same there. A bit, maybe a bit darker blue in there. The shadow side there, so we'll put that in. If I use a bit of sienna, raw sienna, just for this barn bit here, leaving some unpainted. To leave a bit for the viewer to put in. So the same around there, but a little bit darker, the shadow. it from the other side. Now on here, if I put a bit of a door in there. Big enough to get a tractor through. And a couple of windows. Just an impression. I was going to do a portrait. But I'm not an architect. Or just, just a bit of interest in a la in a flat landscape. Right, I'll move my clip up there. I'm going to dry brush across here, across the field now. And for that, I'm going to use a bit of umber, a bit of burnt umber, a bit of raw sienna, a bit of blue. Give that a bit of a try and then we can go over it again. Some darker Payne's grey with a bit of a bit of amber. I'll just just scooch across here. 
just to show some detail. A bit of shadow could we've been from the trees. Uh, just I could, I could just do a couple of little bits of uh, brush, brush wood. Show some just something coming up from the bottom of the uh, the field. Right, okay. Let's just I'll use the rigger now just just to see if I can put in a few little bits and pieces. Birds, a couple of rooks flying in. Oh. And I'll just put a little signature on it. Right, but just a simple Norfolk type of scene. Norfolk is, is part of England that is quite flat, and being flat, you you need the tension of some verticals, and the trees make wonderful verticals. And this bit here gives just an impression that that there, there is some distance. There's a, there's a, a, a wood in the distance. I could, I suppose, even strengthen that up, but I think for the purpose of demonstration that that would be enough. I'll put it in a mount to see what it looks like, get a much better idea of what we've done. I'm going to put it in a, in a mount. that right hope to give you some idea of a of a simple country scene thanks for watching bye bye